this goes back to a discussion of rates. So way back in chapter 14, we talked about kinetics. And so the first thing we need to know is that all nuclear decay is first order. So that means the kinetics equations that we're going to be using are going to be first order kinetics. When we're monitoring rates of nuclear decay, what we usually do is we count the nuclei that decay. And nuclear chemists use a capital letter N to count the number of nuclei that are decaying. And you usually do that instead of talking about concentrations. When you're talking about rates of nuclear decay, a key term that is used is the half-life. And half-life is usually symboled with a lowercase t with a subscript of a half. And half-life is simply defined as time required for half of the sample to decay. So on this slide I have four different nuclides and I show you sample half-lives for these. So for example, uranium-238 has a half-life of 4.5 billion years, 4.5 times 10 to the ninth years. Potassium-40 has a half-life of 1.3 times 10 to the ninth years. Um, actually, this is the way that some people determine the age of various minerals, is they look at the uranium-238 to potassium-40 uh, ratio, because potassium-40 is a decay product of the uranium. Um, plutonium-239 has a much shorter half-life, only 20,400 years. And then, for something like iodine-131, that has a half-life of eight days. So half-lives could vary incredibly <coughs> from seconds to billions of years. So when you're doing nuclear medicine, for example, in a hospital, you probably want to choose a nuclide that has a half-life in the days or hours event so that the person you're treating is not going to be radioactive for billions of years. So you want all that energy to be treating, to be going into the cancer cells very quickly, high energy bursts, but then get that radiation out of the system fairly quickly. So uh, something like iodine-131 is probably the kind of thing that you would see treating some kinds of thyroid cancer, for example. Okay, so, so in this case, what you're doing is, it's, you don't even need the half-life in this case, we just want to say after five half-lives. So, At t equals zero, we have 100% present. That would make sense. So after one half-life, how much would we have left? 50%. After a second half-life, we would be at 25%. A third half-life, we'd be at 12.5%. A fourth half-life, 6.25%. And a fifth half-life, we would be at 3.12% present. So that would be the answer for that. Now that's kind of the brute force way of doing that. There's an easier way of doing that, especially, maybe I don't want to tell you five half-lives, but maybe 3.3 half-lives. And the mathematical way of doing it is the percent remaining is 0 0.5 to the y power, where the y 
is the number of half-lives. So if we wanted to say how much would remain after 3.3 half-lives, after 3.3 half-lives, then that would be 0 0.5 to the 3.3 power. And so what would that be when you do that on a calculator? What? 10.2% percent remaining. And that makes sense. It's somewhere between 12.5% and 6.25%. And so in this case, it does not matter how much you're starting with. We're just asking for how much, what percent of it is left. And the neat things about half-lives is no matter how much you start with, it always takes a half-life to get to 50% of what you started with.